Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. You found it. WCR Nation, this is the podcast to listen to. Yeah, there's some other good ones, I guess, you know, if you're into that kind of thing. But either way, if this is your first time checking us out, thanks for doing so. Like I said, my name is Jersey, and this is a weekly podcast that is all dedicated to the business side of a service industry business. So, window cleaning, pressure washing, we tackle it all. If you like it, or even if it's just tolerable, go back and watch the previous episodes. This is episode like 46, so you got tons to watch. Uh, every Friday it comes out on Window Cleaning Resources channel, and... If you're listening to this on iTunes or SoundCloud or Google Player, if you're listening in podcast version, what's up? I hope you're out there making money finally with the spring weather upon us. If you are one of the uh, cool kids, one of the nation that uh, watches the show all the time, gives us thumbs up, subscribes and all the other cliche stuff, what's going on, man and ma'am? It's because of you I get to do this show, so thanks for watching and If you are part of the elite, which you elite people have just come out of the woodwork. I love it. Um, If you are somebody who watches, thumbs up, shoots me text saying what's going on, and you order your supplies through me, you, my friend, are the reason that I got to eat hot dogs for dinner. Better than ramen. No, but thank you very much for uh, um, ordering through me, and especially those of you who put and shop and put everything in your cart and just shoot me a text and say, What's going on? It's in my cart. Put it in. I love it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, It's like a uh, high five, right? It's like, uh, thanks for putting the work. Here's a little something, something. No, but I do appreciate it. If you want to order your supplies through me, my number is 862-312-2026. That is my direct cell phone, so certainly hit me up. Let me know that you like the show, that you hate the show, whatever. Just tell me where you're from, and uh, I love to hear it. And order your supplies through me. I, I promise that uh, I'm good to deal with. <laughs> yeah. But either way, um, I do want to let you guys know also, please, if you're watching or listening to this show, share it out. I'm telling you, that is the way that I get to reach more people and is a thank you from you guys to let me put the show out. So share it. Um, give me a review if you are on iTunes and I very much appreciate it. Uh, this week, some of the... Um, uh, shout outs that I want to do is for uh, uh, Davis over there at 2020. What's going on, man? Um, also, Nick Washburn, what's going on? And Ryan Glass, thank you guys. Thanks for uh, everything. Uh, thanks for being awesome. And winner, winner, chicken dinner this week is Ronnie Walker. Ronnie, shoot me your information via josh at windowcleaningresource.com and we'll get you out your $50 credit and your swag bag with all the goodies in there, t-shirt, pins, stickers, that kind of thing. So thank you for checking us out. And if you want to win also, comment on the YouTube video. Comment. We want to see how many comments we can get on that YouTube video every single week. So do that. Give us a thumbs up and comment, and it uh, helps support me for sure. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Welcome to the show. Uh, this week... I want to start off by saying that it is coming up to the convention. I know, it's a ways away, I know. But if you haven't done one of these yet, um, the huge convention is my favorite by far. Um, They're all good shows. They're just, any show you can go to is amazing. But the huge convention is just that. It's huge. We're talking about possibly having uh you know a comma in the attendees this year i'm hoping um that'd be pretty awesome uh, i love going to the show love it love it love it um i get to meet people see people i haven't seen in forever some of my best friends literally are in the industry i get to hang out with them so if you are going you need to make reservations you need to get your tickets i'm telling you right now if you start going to these shows you'll not stop they're just that awesome i mean I know guys who um, have been in business, they run monster companies that still go to them just because, A, you're around people like-minded, just like yourself, right, who knows what sucks about being in the business and what doesn't, and, you know, when you complain about a customer or say that what you love about the business, they know. Your family's tired of you saying it, so stop saying it to your family. Um, 
but it's awesome. It's in Atlanta this year, in the uh, hot Atlanta, which is cool. That's like uh, four hours maybe from me, so it'll be pretty awesome. I'm a little spoiled this year for that. But uh, it's going to be August 23rd and 24th, and it's at the Atlanta Marriott Marquis in Georgia. So the Atlanta um, Marquis, right? Marriott Marquis in Atlanta, Georgia. So check it out. I'm telling you, just go to thehugeconvention.com. Check out the website, and uh, it's pretty epic. I'm telling you, as somebody who's been there. If you network, just network alone, and you don't even attend the classes, you're just too networked out, <laughs> you're going to learn something. I'm telling you, every single year, I learn something, and I get to see everybody. And the big thing here is the content creators are going to be there. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's uh, uh, Luke, the window cleaner. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, I'm pretty sure Mo, the window cleaner, is going to be there. Huh? You probably heard of him, but uh, uh, I think Tradman's not going to be there. But Joe is going to be there. Joe, the window cleaner, and Stevo, Stevo, Fluff Daddy, Fluff Daddy. I just want to hug him. That's all I want to do. But uh, yeah, they're all going to be there. We're all going to be there. Content creators from Window Cleaning Resource, and maybe we'll have some kind of party or get together or shindig or some kind of exclusive something for you people who love to watch those guys. That'd be pretty awesome. But either way, they're all going to be there, so you get to meet them. And best of all, you're going to meet other people in your industry. If you don't have window cleaner friends, you need window cleaner friends. It's just, it's awesome. Jump on Voxer. How many groups of Voxers are there? Facebook groups and personal messages of people who are truly, genuinely friends in the window cleaning industry. It's really pretty awesome. So do that, but be ready for it. Get your tickets. Book it, and uh, it's the 23rd and 24th of August, but don't just do those days. Like, come in a day early. So you can hang out and start meeting people. It's really, really worth it. So do that. That puts on a great show. Um, TheHugeConvention.com. It's coming up in August, and you're going to hear me talk about it a lot. So be prepared for that. <sighs> yeah. And we're even going to give away tickets, I think. I think we're going to give away tickets at some point. And I don't know how many we're going to give away. Um, I don't even know that I'm able to give away. I'll have to probably buy them. Um, but either way. We're going to give them away. Why? Because I just said so. So there you go. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you're commenting and thumbs upping and all that other good stuff, then you're awesome and that's who's going to be winning. So keep tuned in for that if that's not cliche enough. Anyway, so this week it does it does kind of coincide with the convention because you want to go to the convention, but you need money for the convention, right? Right? How do you get that money? How do you collect from your customers. Sure, a baseball bat and uh, you know a six foot six, uh, 300 pound um, you know biker might help, but that doesn't always translate very well. Here's the thing, truthfully, in accounts receivable, right? When you have uh, outstanding monies owed to you, here in America at least, um, uh, here's one thing real quick I just want to jump out and say if you're watching this on YouTube or iTunes and you are not from the US comment and tell me where you're from I literally love hearing that I can't text out of country back so if you text me I can't get you back but put it in the messages and I can certainly do that so anyway we hear from a lot of those I get tons of emails from people from all over so that's pretty pretty badass um, but in America if you run um, residential commercial routes you do the whole gambit you're gonna have some money owed and if you do commercial like commercial commercial you're gonna have money owed because they're usually on 30-day terms i'm telling you the largest job that i ever did was 90 days they changed it on me 90 day 90 days no one needs to take 90 days to pay anyone like 90 days, I'm the little guy, right? You're the big giant corporation that I'm cleaning your windows. You're supposed to have all the money in the world for writing. Are you that, like, just crappy in your office setting that you have to take 90 days to get a piece of paper, my invoice, all the way over to the right department? And I'm going to email it in anyway. So you're going to get it to the right person right away. Put it in your inbox. Put a stamp around there and send me my GD check, right? doesn't happen that way. In fact... 
If you don't run your business like a tight money-making machine, you're going to have even more than that. I used to run, and my theory was in business, was that I didn't want to seem like I needed the money, right? So people be like, oh, you want me to write your channel? Whatever is easiest for you. Just shoot it in the mail if you want. That was wrong. That was wrong. No one cares. It's a business. You want to know what I do now? When I go to somebody's house, I say I need it right then and there. And I don't make it awkward. It's the same thing. You go to a grocery store, you're not like, all right, so that'll be a 198.72. And you're like, oh, great. Should I just write a check or put it in the mail? Do you have an invoice? Can you bill me? No, no. Run your, run your company like that too, right? So residential is different than route is different than commercial. And commercial, you're always going to have it. Like, let's be honest. But keep those terms under 30 days at least. But here's what I do. I'm going to start with commercial. Commercial is that beast in that if you have an office goddess, uh, somebody who is in your um, office just running and doing the crap that you're not good at, then you are one of the lucky ones, my friend. If you're doing it yourself, then it's up to you. But I'm going to tell you, Tuesday, Tuesday is the day. On every Tuesday of the week, you go over your collections report and see who owes you money. That's what you do. If somebody missed you somehow in residential every week, Starting from week one, I'm going to call. But in commercial, I am going to check after that 30-day mark, right? That 30-day mark comes, I am on them like white on rice because they just need to be reminded, right? They're not trying for the most part. We've all been screwed, I think. Some of us have. Most of us have. I read somebody said that they've been in business for 20 years and never got stiffed. I got stiffed by one of my favorite clients. I mean, I would literally bring new employees into her and uh, let her talk to them because she was straightforward. She was just a cool, cool chick. She owned a cool business and decided that uh, she would have me clean the windows right up to the end. Kept going more and more delinquent. I'm like, hey, what's going on? And then she disappeared. Closed shop and never told me. So remember, it's just a business transaction. You're not really friends with everybody. But um, if you've never been screwed out of money, then awesome. But after those 30 days, I am on top of them. Now, in a commercial setting, you're not going to be usually doing it more than 30 days. Like I've said before, if you are cleaning a place and it is going to be under 30 days, so every two weeks, every week, that's route. So we're going to talk about that in a second. But commercial is quarterly or more, right? So anything more or less frequently than I should say once a month or less. So what I do is after that 30 days, I'm going to call on the first day. Hey, this is Jersey. I'm just calling to check up and make sure you received the invoice already. Uh, we just hit the 30-day mark, and I just wanted to make sure you guys received it all right. Oh, yep, yep, it's here, and I'm going to track it down. If they go, oh, I'm not quite sure. Okay, could you put me through to who has that? And I'm going to find out. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to have that person talk to me. Yep, I got it right here on my desk. It's in the inbox to get uh, checks in on. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, I appreciate that. Anything else I could do for you, let me know. I'm going to check back with you in a couple days and see if uh, all that's in, in transit. I appreciate it. Oh, okay, great. Because you're ending the call, but you're letting them know, hey, I'm going to be on you. I'm going to be on you. So give me my money. Give me my money. Right? So um, that's the first step that I do. Now what happens is if they don't pay in 30 and I still don't get it to day 40, I'm calling again. Hey, it's Jersey calling again from XYZ. I'm just calling because we haven't received the money yet. I did call uh, last week and they said it was coming out. And I'm just double checking maybe across to the mail. Is it on its way? Could you... Oh, uh, yep, it's right here in my inbox. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, it was in there last week. Is there anything I can do to help expedite out of my side? I'm going to keep saying I'm going to be as polite as I can. And I'm going to keep trying to help them do their flipping job by paying me. But... I'm going to be polite about it because I don't want to burn a bridge. If you call up and go, give me my money. I'm not doing any more service. You didn't give me my Then you lost the job. You've lost the job even if you get the money in there. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. You lost the job. Okay, so don't do that until you're ready to do that. I did see something funny the other day that uh, uh, it was a semi-driver uh, company that did uh, excavation. They pulled all this stuff out, and uh, they pulled out like, you know, 20 um, semi loads of sand for this guy and the guy's not paying him, not paying him. So semi goes back up there and dumps it in his parking lot. Says, that's the first one. If we don't get our money, I'm going to dump the rest of them back in there because we're not taking your stuff and you're not paying us. I thought it was pretty funny. 
at that point, you've burned the relationship. So don't do that unless you're ready to hand that off to your buddies, uh, your competition, if you will. So after I follow up, now what I've also done on day 30 is I'm sending another invoice on day 30, okay? Even though they said they got it, and even though they said it's right here, I'm sending them another invoice. And I'm going to write on the email, I'm going to put duplicate copy for your records. There you go. Now I've sent it again. Now what happens after day seven is that I call every single two days for the next week to two weeks. Hey, I just called a couple days ago. I just wanted to make sure that that's coming in because here's the thing. You sound right now, it sounds like I'm annoying you. And I hope I am to some degree. But when you're on the phone, if I'm talking to you, huh? yep, it's right here. Okay, no, we'll send it out. Okay, thanks. And you hang up. You have two more days of not thinking about me. You have so much of the crap, you don't care. I'm just one of the calls, right? So it's not really annoying you, but I'm staying in the forefront of your brain. So I'm going to keep calling and I'm going to keep reminding you that I want my money. Pay me my money, right? So keep doing that. Eventually, they will pay you. If they don't pay you, then it escalates. Now, I'm going to keep sending it. And what I'm going to do is start sending paper envelopes um, with big red marker or printed overdue or stamper of overdue. So I'm going to give it so that everything that comes in there, they all see it's overdue. And that means that everybody that touches that envelope on its way to the person who it's supposed to go to saw that that person it's going to didn't do what they were supposed to do. So I'm doing a little bit of shaming here and I'm completely okay with that. This is now we're coming up on two months. Now, if it still isn't there in two months, now what I'm going to do is try to find their superior because now it's personal and now I have to go above and beyond because that person's not doing their job. And I've had to do this. I had a plow contract one time, probably one of the largest plow contracts that we ever had. We didn't get our last tech check till June for plowing. Um, I ended up finding out who they were subbing out for and from and calling that person saying, hey, um, I know that you are the actual um, company, the owning, the, the, the mothership, if you will. Um, I do work for this person who's under this person who does work for this person. And they are not paying us. And I'm just trying to find out who I can talk to about that. Oh, somebody's not paying. No, I did a bunch of plow work for somebody and uh, they have not been paying their invoices at all. I've been calling pretty regularly every two days and they keep giving me excuses. And I just want to make sure that I there's nothing I can do more, right? I'm going to go start all over from the very niceness side of things. You catch more flies with honey, right? Now, all of a sudden, if I'm annoying the person who should not be annoyed, there's enough buffers, right? It took a little work to find and it, it might. And yes, you shouldn't have to chase the money this hard. But I'm telling you right then and there, within three hours of that phone call, I had two more phone calls from the company and the president of the company that I did work for apologizing for how they could have possibly missed it. They don't know. They're getting it in there right now. I'm just telling the amount right over the phone. I knew they had everything. Telling the amount, they're writing the check, and he's going to walk it to the post office. Yeah, guess what? You got you got an ass whooping from your mom or your dad, the big boy, right? The, the, the corporation. They yelled at you. Well, I'm sorry I went there and I gave you time, but you guys weren't doing it, okay? I got my money. Now, up to you on how deep you want to go to it. Now, there should never be a time for this money that you just give up because they owe you the money, okay? Now, if it still doesn't get to it and you still can't get it, lawsuit comes into mind, right? People want to jump into that. I'm telling you right now, you will never do, hear me, hear me on this. You will never do a lawsuit for money's owed and be happy about it. It's the truth. Because here's the thing. Say you get into, you know, I mean, by the time we're talking about a lot of this stuff, it may be four or $500. How much does it cost in time and labor and uh, um, uh, lawyer fees and lawyer letters and court proceedings? You've just paid more than that. And if you're one of those people that on principle, you're going to get that money, even if it costs you a thousand to collect 500, awesome. High five. You got some uh, deep, dark uh, hatred down inside you. Get that money. It's yours. You earned it, right? Um, but lawsuits suck. I mean, even those the, the the chick that I thought was my friend was maybe $1,400 by the time it was all said and done. We did a bunch of different services. And it was stacking up, and it was a small job, so we kind of, whatever, it was my fault. It was who she was that I didn't collect, I think. But um, I didn't sue for $1,400. I'm going, it just not makes sense. She was out of state at that point then, and 
unless you're a big corporation, you have lawyers at your uh, beck and call, it's just not worth it. So don't even think lawsuit. It's just not a fun time. You can annoy somebody for a very long time until they physically tell you not to annoy them anymore. Then uh, then you have to move to the next one. Um, other than that, you can go into uh, small claims court and things like that and then counter sue for fees and things. Check your local. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what you can and what you can't do. But you could go that route. It's just don't don't think of it in your brain. Okay? Route is the other one that is big. Now, when you do route... You want to till collect. Till collect. Unless they're corporate, till collect. If they're corporate, you're right into the commercial side of things. You're going to have a net 30, at least net 30. Um, And if terms are too far for you, truly, if you're doing a job and they're saying, uh, it's a 90-day pay, you don't have to do that job. If you're in a position that you can drop a client, firing a client is completely okay. So keep that in mind. It's your business. Don't screw yourself trying to wait for somebody else to pay you. But always till pay as much as possible. Now, till pay is this. When you are done, you give them the invoice. Hey, thanks. We're all set. We're out of here. Just need to uh, collect on this. And you set it down. And then the person thing goes, oh, okay, $13. And they give you $13 on a till. Sometimes they have checks waiting for you. When you're selling the job, explain how you're going to get paid. So when you're doing the job, go, great. Your your job will be $25 every two weeks. Um, we'll be able to collect that right out of the till from you in cash, or you can have a check ready for us every time. We're going to be there every second Wednesday. If there's rain on that Wednesday, we'll be there on Thursday. So by Wednesday, just have a check ready for us if you want to go that route, and we can certainly just drop this off, mark paid, take the check, and we're out of your hair, right? For them, it becomes routine, but for them, it's also kind of nice because now they don't have to worry about all these outstanding bills. But you've laid it out there, and you told them how it's happening. That's how it's going to happen. I love to cash and till pay. Not because I've I've never once taken a dollar and not claimed it. Never. I know there's guys out there that do that. I know there's girls out there that do that. I'm not talking about you. Do your own thing. Um, but I've never done that. And the reason is because I always track. I'm a numbers person, so I want to know where I'm at. And if I don't put stuff into the system and, and, and file it, then I'm not going to know where I'm at the next year because there's going to be money off the, the books. I hate that, so I don't do that. But what I love about cash is when cash comes, guess what? My guys take the ch- the cash, mark it down, what we talked about, mark it down so I know they sign on the little sheet, bring the cash back at the end of the day, I count it, and guess what? The cash is mine. I've already run it in. I don't have to deposit it in a bank, right? The, the accounting software knows that I had it. That's my cash. That's my fun money. That goes into my wallet, so I always have cash. So I'm okay with cash. I, I dig it. Um, and then that's how you can play with weird savings and bonuses and things too. So cash influx is always nice. Cash is nice. You don't have to go to a bank to get cash. You just have it then, right? So that's route. Route's a pretty easy one. Same thing applies, but shorter. Here's the thing. If you're doing a job every single week and you don't get paid for two weeks, are you going to keep going? That's up to you to decide, right? But I know I'm going to be on and go, Hey, uh, just so you know, we're still we're two weeks behind actually right now, so um, we just need that payment. If they still can't pay you, say, hey, let them know that we're two weeks behind. We'll be able to do it next week, but we're not going to be able to continue uh, if we, we don't get that money. We just got to stay up to date so that we don't get too far behind. And uh, people are good about that. Nobody wants to be late on the bills. Think of that feeling that you get if you're late on bills. It sucks. They don't want to be. They're trying to squeak it out as far as possible. I know a lot of you probably pay your uh, your loans, um, your uh, payments on your loans the day they're due. And that's cool, right? You try to stretch it out as much, but it's strict. You know the day that it's due, and if it's not due, there's penalties. There should be that in our industry. But again, you want to try to be cordial. Now, residential, it's a whole other beast, and I'm going to tell you how I do it. Now, when I go to the door in the beginning, we've talked about this a little bit. But I give him all the information, and my crew chief, um, he's going to say everything. Hey, uh, my name is Jersey with XYZ. We're here to do your windows. Um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start on the inside. This is so-and-so. He's going to be on the inside. I'm going to be on the outside. Blah, 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 blah. Here's your bad news. And I give him the check at the very end. I'm sorry, the bill at the very end. And here's your bad news. Ha, ha, ha. Right? I give it to him, and I say, now, when we're all said and done, there's a satisfaction form in there that we'll need back. It's just three simple questions and a spot for notes. Put it there. Put it in the envelope. You can even seal up the envelope. I don't seal our envelopes when I give it to them. They're all in envelopes, but I don't seal them, so they can seal them up themselves. 
Um, but I give it to him say, you can put that in there, seal it up. We don't get to see any of that. You can put whatever you feel. Uh, and it goes right back to the office. We don't even see that. So good or bad, we'd just love to hear from you. And um, if you want, you can put the check right in the envelope or you can give it to me personally. Um, but then, of course, when we're done, we'll, we'll need to check before we leave. Boom. Okay, great. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Now it's understanding. Guess what? When you start saying that, you will get money on 99.99% of those houses. There will be the one person who sneaks out sometimes while you're doing the work and go, Oh my gosh, I forgot. I'll be back in two hours. Can you come get it then? <sighs> Throw it in the mail. I don't want to come all the way back there. Right? Do what you want at that point. But almost everybody will do it because it's expected. It's just like we talk about water fed when people go, well, how do you take the screens off? I say in my call, I'll be there between 9 and 10. Just make sure you take all the screens down so we can get right to work. People go, okay. And they take them down. There's no questions because I told them. It's an understanding. The only time people question anything is when there is no understanding. When there's not something laid out there, nobody knows what to do. That's my same theory on, on kids. If kids don't at least have rules, you know, they'd be a tyrant. But if they don't have rules and you're one of those free-range parents, they're confused. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They don't know what's good. They don't know what's bad. They don't know what they're supposed to do. So everybody kind of needs rules to some degree. You put it out there, they will give it to you right away. Now, I have been stiffed on houses... Not many, I think one or two. And the problem with houses are, is that you can call and call and call and call and call. You can text, you can do everything, but there is no top tier. There's nobody you can go to after like, okay, well, Mrs. Jones, we were at your house. Now we need to talk to your boss. At your there is none of that. There is no big, you can't keep working your way up the ladder. It's just Mrs. Jones. But what you can do is start sending letters if you're in the area sometimes stop by if you know that they could be home that's getting a little harassing i personally don't but you certainly could right i like to write letters and in big letters on that envelope overdue why because still the postman sees it they're gonna go to their mailbox and pull it out and go oh 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 right there's nothing wrong with a mild shaming when it comes to giving me my money because that is again how we all function right but here's the thing, when you get to a certain point and they're not paying you and they've just fallen off the bridge and you want to go and do your whole legal action thing again, you're back in the small claims court, you're back in the pros and cons things and people go, well that's fine, I'll just put a lien on your house. <sighs> okay, you could do that. But here is what a lien does. After, after the courts have approved everything, say yes, they owe you that money, which they could tell you they don't know it. There's nothing, you know, there's no proof that you did the work and you didn't sign, you know, a contract beforehand or something. Once they approve that, you then have to schedule another um, court hearing to then get terms. So to file the uh, um, home lien, lien, mortgage, mortgage lien. There you go. Thinking automotive lien. Autom anyway, mechanics lien. No. Um, so now you have to file it again, go through all that headache again. Now, how much have you spent on it, right? And now you have this fancy lien in your hand. No, you're not going to be garnish. You're not going to garnish them more than likely, right? If you garnish them, great. Then, you know, employers, I believe, I'm not even going to answer that one, but I'm pretty sure the employers, even if they're told to garnish, they don't have to, or maybe they do have to. I don't know. Tell me I'm wrong. I probably am. I don't know that one. I'm not a lawyer. But even if they do put a lien on it, guess what? Your lien sits on that house until the house is sold. So if uh, Mrs. Jones lives in that house for another 20 years, eventually, 20 years later, she goes to sell the house, the title broker, right? Um, they're the ones then that see, oh, there's a lien on your house. We have to pay that first. So if the house sells down the road, that money then goes on there from the lien. Yeah. So you could technically get it, but how much money did you spend? And then what are you doing 20 years from now that you care about this, you know, four, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars, right? So collecting sucks, but if you get the collecting done right away, you don't have to go through all this headache. You don't have to try to get it down the road because you're already gonna have it. So get it up right in front. This is not something that you do because you're doing it for fun. This is something that you do because you're going to make the money. You want money. I'm sorry. You you we do this because there's money involved. 
right? That's how your your children eat and and uh, all that fun stuff. How you buy supplies from your favorite supplier, right? So collect it and make it your job to um, uh, collect. That's my key. Anyway, I do appreciate you guys checking us out. And like I said, the huge convention, please check it out. I would love to meet you first and foremost. And second off, you're going to learn so much stinking stuff. Speakers are awesome for the most part. I don't think I've ever seen a bad one. Um, I love seeing the people. It's just awesome. I'm not even going to talk about it. I'll talk more about it next week. Please comment down below. Give us a thumbs up and share this. Like This is the biggest reward for my effort is for you to share this and buy supplies from me. Truly. So if you love it, do that. I appreciate it. If you want to buy your supplies from me, be one of the cool kids. By the way, I got yelled at. If anybody's even still watching, I got yelled at. Somebody said I can't say the word cool kids anymore because they went into some tirade about people getting loans from their dad. I don't even know what it was. If you want to be one of the cool kids, one of the flipping cool kids, the ones who watch this show and are part of the nation, the people who are the smartest people in the industry, then do please call me, 862-312-2026, and uh, call me or text me. Tell me your stuff's in your cart. You want to order it. Love it. I appreciate it. Do it. And until next week, go out there and be epic and make and collect that money.